to Friday, January 28th, and the time for your body this today morning news update. An attorney at law is baffled as to what part of the constitution government's legal advisers are using to guide the Prime Minister Mia Motley in offering opposition parties two seats in the Senate. The Prime Minister on Wednesday said she had received a legal opinion that cleared the way for her to offer the seats in the upper house to the party receiving the second highest votes in the January 19th general election. But Queen's Counsel Gaff Patterson in an interview with Bobby Distley said the Prime Minister would have to point to the portion of the Constitution that gives her the authority to make such an offer. She doesn't play a role in appointing uh, in the appointment of the independent seven that mm. is, is exclusively within the pur purview oh, of the president, president or in the appointment of the opposition senators. She only has the ability to influence the appointment of the 12 persons who, the 12 senators who can only be appointed on the, uh, by the president acting on the recommendation of oh, the prime minister. minister. She doesn't have a broader discretion to weigh in on who the opposition senators should be. Superintendent of Prisons, Lieutenant Colonel John Nurse, addresses claims that six former condemned killers who are to be resentenced remain on death row at Dodds Prison. He spoke to Bobby this today on the issue after a High Court judge requested that the state investigate the claims. The place of execution is the place of execution. If you get the warrants read to you, you are close, you put your place close to the place of execution, okay? Mm -hmm. In Old Glendary, I think we used to call that death row, okay? We have not had any warrants of execution read now since Aika, Rebecca. So there are no people in those areas close to the place of execution, what ordinarily would have been called death row, all right? If you are in here on the sentence of death, life maximum, uh, uh, life sentence or whatever, whatever, whatever you live, generally speaking, in one building, okay? Mm -hmm. Depending on your your behavior and so on as well. So if, if, if his circumstance has not changed, you're not going on death row, you're going on death row for, or what, what you call death row, all right? So when I say to you that we've not had any persons in that area, we've not had any persons in that area. Residents in St. Lawrence Gap are calling for several lights to be repaired nine months after the area received a much-needed lighting upgrade. Spokesman for the St. Lawrence, Dover and Maxwell Association, Adrian Donovan, tells Bobby this today the lights stopped working following a freak storm in June last year. The lighting project, which saw over 140 LED lights installed along the island's top entertainment stretch, was a collaborative effort between the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc. and Simmons Electrical. However, Donovan estimated that some 25 lights suddenly stopped working after the storm, the majority of which are close to the Dover Plain Field and Dover Beach. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living.
to news from the region, the Antigua and Barbuda government decides against scrapping the requirement for all arriving passengers to the country to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19, at least for the time being. More from ABS News. The proposal to allow unvaccinated visitors to enter Antigua and Barbuda with the benefit of a rapid antigen or PCR test has been placed on hold. During the update provided during Thursday's post-cabinet media briefing, government says it needs to gather more data. Information Minister the Honorable Melford Nicholas says the government has not seen a fallout in the tourism sector from the original policy, meant to stymie the spread of COVID-19. We have not yet seen any pronounced impact of the original policy of requiring people to be uh, vaccinated. It has not really dampened the enthusiasm for persons who want to come here for a vacation. Vaccines have been proven to help lower the risk of contracting and spreading COVID-19, as well as prevent severe infection. However, with tourism being the country's primary revenue generator, Cabinet, he says, is prepared to revisit this position. What is now a competitive position in Antigua, if we maintain that position for, for much longer, could also turn out to be uncompetitive if the global community moves there. So this is not a fixed position for once and for all. Um, we are looking at it from the standpoint of at this particular point in time. Meanwhile, and finally, the Pan-American Health Organization says more than 8 million new COVID-19 cases were reported in the Americas. PAHO's director, Dr. Carissia Etienne, said this was the highest number of weekly cases in the region since the pandemic started. In South America, the United States continues to have the highest numbers of new infections. Although cases decreased by nearly 1 million over the last week. By contrast, in many of Mexico's southern states, we have seen new infections triple over the last seven days. In Central America, where weekly fatalities were up 107% compared to the previous week, Belize is reporting the highest rates of new infections and infections are accelerating in Honduras and Costa Rica. In South America, Paraguay and some of the Guianas are seeing COVID cases double nearly every two days. And infections are especially high in Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador. Argentina reported over 797,000 cases while Brazil's case count of 477,000 showed a 193% increase over the prior week. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.